So tonight I'm going to share something with you that really it's been on my heart for several weeks. I talked a little bit about it in pre-service devotional um, about a month ago. So if you were there in, in that devotional, please okay. just pretend like it's the first time that you were there. Okay? Come on now. All right, I will pay you later. But, you know, it amazes me how God unfolds things because on Sunday, again in pre-service prayer, Elder Knight, you brought a beautiful devotional and it confirmed what I'm about to bring to you tonight. And then Brother Hudson on Sunday yeah. was dancing all yeah. around yeah. the sermon that, or the, not a sermon, I don't know what it is, but he was dancing all around my topic and I was so nervous uh -oh. and, you know, my, my gut was clenched and then when I unclenched it, I realized, well, you know what? God's just trying to say something Come to on, us. Right. So if you will listen and receive, yeah. then you will benefit, not from my words, but from his Amen. words. So tonight we're going to look at 1 Samuel 18, 5 through 9, and I am going to read out of the New King James Version, because the language is just a little bit easier to understand. And it goes like this, you can read um, on the overhead screen with me. So David went out wherever Saul sent him, and behaved wisely, and Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Yeah. Now it had happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul, yeah. not David, but King Saul, with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. So Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him. He, he said, they have ascribed to David, ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed only thousands. Now, what more can he have but the kingdom? Oh, my. And Saul eyed David from that day forward. In other words, he started to give him the stink eye. Everyone say, stink eye. That's just Texas language, and, and let's just be frank, honey, we have our own language. Can somebody say amen to that? Woo! God bless Texas. So what I'm going to talk to you tonight about is sidelined and silenced. Sidelined and silenced. So as we look at David, up until this point in his life, David has been the darling of the nation of Israel. He has uh, I'm sorry, he has slain Goliath, and he has been anointed as the future king yes. of Israel. He's the son-in-law of Saul, who is the current king. He's the captain over Saul's army, and he is even the favorite musician in the court of King Saul. So things, I would say, are going pretty great for David. Right. And everywhere that David goes, he's celebrated, and his face is probably on the cover of People magazine, and the headline under his picture would be in big, bold letters, and it would say, David has killed tens of thousands, and then in little letters underneath oh, no. that you can barely read, it would say, and Saul got 
run. He doesn't even know where he's running. He's just blindly running because he knows my enemy is out to destroy me. And his enemy is telling him, David, you will never be king. So David is a mighty man of war. He knows what it's like to face an enemy from without. He's dealt with Goliath and with the Philistines, but now he's facing an enemy from within. And he doesn't know what to do. So David runs and he runs until he finds a Philistine city to find refuge. But remember, the Philistines are his enemies. What business does David have running to his enemy to find shelter? It doesn't make sense, so of course things are going to go sour. Right. So David runs away from that situation, and in his panic state, he's just running from one bad situation to another and to another. But honey, don't judge David too harshly, because we do the same thing. We go from one bad relationship to another.
on the Arizona, which was a battleship, and that's a good thing. But his new assignment on the staff was different because this time he is on a destroyer. And Donald Stratton said this, I left Pearl Harbor on a stretcher, but I returned on a destroyer. I had recovered my strength. <laughs> Donald Stratton and David both made a life-changing decision. Yes, they were sidelined. Yes, they were silenced. But they made it into a season of recovery. Stand up and say. 
just get into his shadow. I'd like us to pray. God, you see every heart, Lord. You see every desire, God. Help us, Lord, to get into the shadow of your wings. Where there is protection, God. Where there is healing. Where there is peace. Where there is direction. I won't be sidelined anymore. I won't be silenced anymore. Let's worship him, church. Let's worship him. Yeah. 